Welcome to Crimson Guitars. I am going to give you a quick tutorial of sorts um, in how to sharpen a fret saw. These, this is the Crimson Guitars fret saw. It is something that we sell and use a lot. And because we use it a hell of a lot, or I use it a hell of a lot at least, um, it's gone a little bit blunt, as is the want of most saws. Now, this isn't something that, uh, this is something that frightens the pants off most people. And really, it is actually really simple. Um, it's, it's a question of some very basic geometry. And unless you have totally destroyed your saw, um, it's there for you to see and copy and then just replicate. And all you need is a little sharp, preferably brand new triangular file. This is a, a little Barco file. I've just put a handle on it because never use a file without a handle. You, it's, it's not safe. Um, a saw and, and preferably a Crimson Guitar saw vise because they're awesome. Um, now, our fret slotting saw cuts on the pull. So it cuts pulling backwards, which actually means that, well, it means that I'm slightly confused by which side I'm putting this in. Uh, now, the nice thing about the saw vise is obviously it holds the saw in place, tightens up nicely, and everything is presented to you at a good height for you to be able to see what you're working on. Uh, now, I must preface this by saying I am no expert in sharpening saws. I've done it 10 times, a dozen times maybe. Uh, over time, and it's actually something that I want to uh, properly investigate. There are things like fleam, fleam, I love that word. Um, and uh, there are people that, that change the, the angle of the teeth as, as it progresses along the blade, because when you, when you start the cut, you want it to present uh, you want the teeth presented at the wood at one angle to make it easier to start the cut. And then as you get going, you want a different angle so it <laughs> does that. Um, what is wrong with me? This is a woodworking video. I, I, I don't know. <sighs> so anyway, I'm no expert, but it really is very easy. If you are doing a full restoration on an old saw, go and watch um, there's a link below. I'm going to remember the guy's name in a minute, uh, but it's completely escaped me now. English dude, good workshop, teaches very well. He talks about fleam and stuff. <sighs> anyway, okay, the basics of this. It cuts on the pull, therefore the teeth are basically backwards on what they would be uh, or what you would expect, which is fine. Um, this saw will probably need sharpening every 30 or 40 fret jobs. And that is just the nature of a quality saw, basically. This is not a mass-produced hard point something, uh, or a Japanese saw that uh, gets bent and then replaced. I'm so annoyed. Apprentices have borrowed, have borrowed my saws. I'm gonna put this down there so you can see and uh, basically put a kink in the blade by mistreating it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and hammer it out, but I don't hold much hope. And unfortunately this has happened to half of the... S ah. Hi, no rants. Okay, now, basically the set of these teeth is very, very minimal. And the set is, you've got al alternating teeth, facing a different way. So essentially it goes like that. And uh, that also means that you've got to sharpen alternating teeth at a different angle, which, yeah, is actually quite easy once you get going. Uh, you just need to figure out what that angle is 
by having a look at the teeth that you've got and uh, and then going before we get to sharpening i need to use acetone to just clean there's a little bit of gunk left over uh, it's just a little bit of gunk. There's there's waxes and oils and things in wood, and there are. Uh, we I also use masking tape to as a depth guide, basically. Uh, although that tends not to leave crap on the blade. But anyway, it's just one of those things. Now, with the, with the saw here, if I push down on there, I'm bending it. I don't want to do that. So put it down on something nice and flat, and. Really, you should actually clean your blade like this fairly regularly. You will be amazed at how much of a difference it makes uh, on any saw not having uh, crap on it. That's a technical term, basically. Lovely. Just that one simple thing is going to make the whole saw feel much sharper. Now, this saw has very fine teeth and there's not very much of a difference between them. Uh, I'm going to do it all from one, one side rather than two. Uh, other saws I've done, I've, I've actually swapped the whole saw around and done that. But uh, essentially we're talking about a very slight, very slight angle five degrees or so in this case. Now I've matched the angle that's on the teeth as it is and I'm just very gently taking an even amount off each tooth and the angle that I'm going at is not very much. The one thing that worries me, especially because I'm talking to you and concentrating on talking as well, is uh, that I will miss, uh, instead of missing just one, I'll miss two, and therefore I'll screw up the whole saw. It's not likely to happen, but uh, be aware of that. Uh, as with most work of this sort, or any, any tools really at all, if you have to push really hard, you're probably doing it wrong. This is a very gentle, soft process. I'm just using the weight of the file and, and my hand just to gently take the blunt tip off. And there we have it. Now, just in the interests of uh, keeping this short, because you don't need to see everything, I'm just going to mark where I got to. So, here we go, we're in the middle. I was at this angle, where are we, there we go. I was at this angle on those teeth. On the other teeth, it's the opposite angle. and. and the same process. And essentially what you're doing is you're just creating a new tip on the blades, a new cutting surface. And once this is done, you're sorted. If you take, if for example, I did four, four passes with the file, instead of two everywhere else, I would make that one tooth much shorter than the others and that would cause some issues. Uh, a slight variation is not too much of an issue. You won't really notice it, but um, yeah. Well, basically that's it. It really is that simple. Paul Sellers. Paul Sellers is the man to watch. He does some seriously awesome videos that I probably should have watched again, again, again. I've, I've, I've watched those multiple times uh, just before doing this one, but hey. Uh, yeah, he's, he's an excellent YouTuber and phenomenal craftsperson and teacher. I want to meet him. Anyway, watch his videos for m much more depth 
uh, into this particular subject. Uh, this saw, however, especially if it's relatively new, is it's a doddle. It, it really is very, very basic. Uh, and when I'm not actually talking to you, it goes rather fast. One of the tricks, one of the tricks that Paul actually talks about is marking the angle that you want to go at on your saw vise with a bit of tape or, or pencil or something. Uh, I'm just using muscle memory. I, I know that's the angle. I'm just going to do that. Um, however, that's another thing that you could do. Uh, draw the angle that you're going and make sure that you match it. Um, like so many things, it, 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 it's, it seems to be an incredibly precise job and you can make it so, but it will still work if there's a slight variation. So there we go. Now, what was my angle? Here we are, it is done. Now, if you've ever sharpened anything before, the principle is basically the same. If you can see a, a white line at the tip of whatever you're sharpening, then it's not sharp, that's rounded over and blunt. Uh, we have basically removed all of those white lines uh, and resharpened it. <clears throat> if your saw is in much worse condition, sometimes people would take, for example, a leveling beam and flatten the whole blade, um, flatten the tips of the teeth so that it's basically level, and then start again. That is, that is not the level of uh, work that we're doing on this tool. This is taking a new saw and keeping it relatively new. So, uh, well, there we have it. I mean. I must have something to cut. Here we go. It's nice and sharp. Ooh. Well, there we go. Don't cut things when they're not in a vice, please. That's how you bend saw blades. Uh, anyway, look, thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe. If you have tips and tricks, if you have got a method that you particularly use for sharpening any saw or a fret saw, uh, please let me know. The whole point of all of this is that I want to learn and we at Crimson want to learn more and refine our skills as well as yours. So uh, yeah, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, CrimsonGuitars.com if you want to buy a saw vice or a, or a fret slotting saw. Um, click like and subscribe, share this with all of your friends if you have any. I have a workshop, I, I don't need friends. I have my tools. I have you guys, it's all good. Um, be good, go make some sawdust. Cheerio. Cheerio, I've now st I started saying cheerio at the end of videos and I don't know why. It's not, it's not really me. Ta-ta. <laughs> I need some coffee.